Today we will see three attack types. SQL injection to bypass a login, command injection for creating a reverse shell from target system, and then privilege escalation by exploiting the kernel to get the root access. To perform this attack, we will be using a target system that is Kyoptrix 2. This can be downloaded from the site wallham.com. The link is given in the description. Now before we move on with our attacks, let us get a quick overview about these attack types. SQL injection. In this attack type, attacker injects the SQL query into target's backend database through web application. Let us understand it with example diagram. So we have web application here which interacts with the backend database like MySQL and we have a user who uses the browser to interact with the web application. Now let's say the user access the web application like Facebook or eBay and he gets a login screen. In the login screen, he enters username and password and send it to web application. Now this web application program will be using a query which looks something like this. This is how the SQL query looks like. So the web application will insert the value given by the user under these quotes in the place of username and password and send to the database. Database will read this select UID from users where username is this and password is this. If username and password are correct, then database will give out the corresponding UID which will be some number. After receiving the number, the web application will give the access to the user to his home page or if it's admin to admin page. Now let's say another scenario. Instead of giving normal username and password, user have entered these values. So user values like single quote or one equal to one hash and password some value like pass123. So web application will insert these values under these quotes like this and this will be sent to the database. When database read this query, it will ignore the query after this hash because hash is considered as a comment. So everything else will be considered as comment and will not be execute. So the query will become this. So database will read select UID from users where username is single quote quote close so there is no value or one equal to one so since one equal to one is a true condition so database will give out the uid since there is no specific username password so it will give out the uid of all the users after receiving all uid web application will read the first uid and based on that it will give the access to the user to the home page now this is a classic example that how sql injection can be used to bypass the authentication there are other technique where the attacker use the union operator which is called union based. In this attacker use the union operator to append his own query with the original query to retrieve the data from database like table name, column name or data inside the column which will be displayed on the web page. But some application doesn't display the output on the web page. In that case attacker use blind SQL injection technique. Under that he use boolean based and time based technique. In this technique the attacker will observe the response of a page. Based on the response of a page, he will predict that what might be the output. Like in a boolean based, he use logical condition. If the log logical conditions are correct, the page will load normally. Under the time based, he use some slip function and based on that, if the page takes some time to load, then it means the query is correct. Now let us see our next attack type that is command injection. There are other techniques like union based in which the attacker uses a union operator to append his own query with the original query to retrieve data from a database like table name, column name which will be displayed on a web page. But sometimes the output is not displayed on a web page. In that case the attacker uses the blind SQL injection technique in which the attacker observes the response of a page. Like in this two techniques are used boolean based and time based. In boolean based the attacker uses a logical condition with the query like to check if there is a three column in a table. If the query is correct, if the condition is true, the page will load normally. Same way, in time based, he use the slip function. So if the query is correct, then the page will take some time to load. So that's how the attacker will know whether the query is correct or not and get the information from the database. Now let us see the next attack type, that is command injection. Command injection. In this attack type, attacker injects the OS command into target system through web application. Let us understand it with the following diagram. So we have web application and we have a user here use the browser to interact with this web application. Now let's say this web application have a functionality to ping IP. So user enter the IP address and send it to the web application. Now this web application will add the ping command with the IP and send it to its host OS. Now this host OS will run this ping command. 
in its shell like bash shell and gives the result to the web application. This web application will forward this result to the user. Now along with the IP address, let's say the user have entered the OS command like ls by using the separator. ls command is used for listing the files in a current directory. So this command will be sent to the web application. Web application will read this and forward it to the backend host OS like this. So the OS will run this command ping and then this ls command. So it will give the result from the ping command along with the result from the ls command that is list of files. It will be forwarded to the user and the user can see it on the browser. So with this the attacker can give any command and execute on the backend operating system and get the result on the web page. By using this attacker can also create a reverse shell to get the access into the system. Next let us see privilege escalation. In privilege escalation once the user get access into the system he try to get the access of other user. It can be done in two ways that is horizontal and vertical. In horizontal user 1 try to get the access of user 2 so that he can access the data of user 2. In vertical the user 1 will try to get the access of higher privilege right root access. Now this is possible by using different techniques like by kernel exploit or by system misconfiguration like some files are set with SQRD bit or with a program flow like MySQL the user can add a normal user to a admin group. So now let us see our attacks. Next attack type is privilege escalation. In this if the attacker have the access to target system he try to get the access of other user. It can be done in two ways horizontal and vertical. In horizontal, if the attacker have access to user 1, he try to get the access of user 2. In vertical, if the attacker have access to user 1, he try to get the access of higher privilege like root user. Now in Linux, this can be done in different ways. By exploiting the kernel, by taking the advantage of system misconfiguration like SUID bit set for some certain files which allows the file to be executed with the root privilege or some bug in a program like MySQL. From the MySQL, the user can add a normal user to admin group. Now. Let us move on with our practical. For the lab setup, we will be using VMware. You can also use VirtualBox. In this, we are running the attacker machine that is Kali and the target machine that is Kyoptrix 2. Once you start this Kyoptrix, you will get the login screen. So we don't have the login and we don't have the IP address of this machine. Now we try to get the full access into this machine. Now let's go back to attacker machine. First, let us get the IP address of this attacker machine. For this, we will use the IP command. Now here you can see that this is our IP address and this is the subnet we are using. Now we are going to scan this whole subnet to find which IPs are live so that we can find the IP address of our target machine. To do that, we will use nmap. Now here we are using as an option that is for performing the ping sweep. In ping sweep means we are sending the ping request to each IP in the subnet. Now we can also write it in other format like 0-100 to scan the first 100 IPs. Now here we can see the output. Dot .2 is the default gateway. Dot .128 is the IP address of our attacker machine. And the remaining is dot .168. So this must be the target. Let us get the more detail about this IP. For this we will do the version scan. Now version scan will be done by using nmap. For this we are going to run the nmap with the root privilege because uh, we are running the system as a normal user. So we will use the sudo. Now hyphen s capital V is used for the version scan. In version scan we get the detail of what services are running on the open ports as well as what are the version of those services. Now here we can see the output. We see these ports are open and here we have the port 80. It's running the web service that is Apache. 
and it is using the CentOS. So we get the information that target system is CentOS. Now let us see that what application is running on this port 80. For this we will use the web browser and go to the IP address. Now we will enter the IP of target. So we got a login screen. Now in here we will try the SQL injection. So let us use the same query that we have used in the example. Now password we can enter anything because we know that after the hash everything will be considered as comment. So we got the access of administrative console. Now here we have a web function to perform the ping request. So let us see that if we give the ping any IP. So we get this output. Here is the reply of ping request. Okay, now let us try the command injection here. So we use the separator and ls command. Now we can see here this is the output of ping as well as the output of ls command. Here we can see that two files index.php ping.php in the current directory. So it means command injection works. Now we will use this command injection to create a reverse shell into the target system. To create the reverse connection first let us start the listener in attacker machine. For that we will use the netcat. So now we are listening on port 8080 for the any reverse connection. So we have opened the port 8080 so that we can create the reverse connection to this machine from the target machine. Now in the target machine, let us create a reverse connection. First we start the bash in interactive mode. Redirect the standard output to the socket. Tagger IP and the port and we have to also redirect the standard input to standard output. Now we submit it. Now here we can see that we have got the reverse connection into the system and we got the bash shell. Let's confirm it. So we can see that Kyoptrix level 2, we got the access. Let's see by which user we got the access. So we got the user Apache and now we have to get the user root. For that we will do the privilege escalation. Now we know that the target system is CentOS. Let's confirm it again. Here we can see that CentOS release 4.5. Now on the basis of that, we are going to search for the exploit for performing privilege escalation. To search the exploit, let's use this search exploit. kernel 2.6 let's see if there is exploit for this now here we have few exploits and it is also given the version kernel 2.4.x 2.6 here we can see that 2.6 up to 2.6.19 so our version is 2.6.9 it comes between this it means there is a high chance that this can work 9542.c let us use this for using this first we will copy this in a web directory so that we can download it on the target machine so let's copy it so we copy it to web directory
okay so we don't have the permission let's use the sudo it is done now let us start the web server Now the server is started so let us download it on the target machine now here we first we move to the temp directory so that we can download because temp directory have a default permission to download any uh, file now here we'll use the wget command attacker ip that is our web server ip and the file name here we can see that the file has been downloaded now let us compile this file by using gcc create the output file let's give the output file name as brief and our file that you have downloaded that we need to compile so this is the object file name and this file we are going to run once it is compiled ok it is done now let us give it the execute permission to this file Let us run this file now. So if you write it again here, who am I? So you got the root access. So that's how these attack types can be used to get the full access into the system. I hope you enjoy the video. See you next time.